Today, we're going to be making a color wheel. Now my color wheel and your color wheel are gonna look different because you have different colors on your palette than I have. This is the final result, although this is not the one we're gonna do. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. The reason I think it's important to make your own color wheel is you don't know what your colors are gonna do. You might have a different brand of color than I use. You might add more water than I do. And I tried to use really saturated color here. And it's really important to know what your colors are, what they can do in terms of when we talk about mixing around the color wheel as opposed to mixing across the color wheel. And I do have my primaries going around the uh, around this color wheel. And then I also have some outliers. Those are just colors that I don't use very often, but they may be colors that you put in your color wheel because you use them all the time. It's a very personal thing. And isn't it pretty? What's more fun than making a color wheel? So let's get started. All right, today we're gonna to make a color wheel. And the reason for doing this is because I often suggest to people that they make their own color wheel. Making your own color wheel from the colors that you have on your palette is really important because I might mix colors together and my result is gonna look different than yours depending on what kind of paint you're using and what your choice of a palette is. So let's start with making the color wheel. I first took a compass and made a six inch square, um, pulled it out to three inches and so I could make a six inch circle. And then I went in, oh, maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches and made a second circle. And then I made my compartments. And now I'll get started making the wheel. Now this is my color wheel and this is exactly what my palette looks like when you look at it here. You can see my palette. I can't get it in the total frame. Ugh, looks like a bloody mess. But it's actually not, it's, but it's set up systematically so I know exactly where to go because I don't want to have to think about where things are when I'm painting. Because, you know, when you're painting, there's like a million decisions to make. The last thing you want to think about is you know, what, what, well, what well do I go into to get what I want. All right, so we'll start with the first one. The first one that I have on my palette is Lemon Yellow. This is a Winsor Newton tube paint. Let's get that in. That's pretty much full strength. It's a very, very bright yellow. Next yellow, and I have two yellows on my palette. Second one is Hansa yellow, and this is from Daniel Smith. And you can see how much darker that one yellow is than the other one. Or I hope you can see that. And that's the reason for having two yellows, having one that's light and one that's dark. Right, next on my palette is a lighter red. For me, that is cadmium red. So we'll put that in. There we go. Oh, ding dang, wait a second. We gotta get rid of that. I made an error. We'll get rid of it. Just by blotting it, we'll make it come up. And we'll come back to that in a second when it dries. Cause we're gonna put a cadmium orange there. So the cadmium red goes here. Probably won't be the first mistake I make. All right, clean your brush out really well. Next red on my palette is a dark red. It's alizarin red, I mean alizarin red, and it's a dark, relatively dark red. It's only relatively dark to the cadmium red. It has a little bit of blue in it, which you can see it's starting to tilt a little bit toward um, violet. It's not in violet yet, but it could go there. So when it comes to using primaries, I mostly use my cadmium yellow, my alizarin crimson, and an ultramarine blue, which we will get to. So next on my color wheel is a permanent rose. I use a lot of permanent rose. The reason I say this is that I buy the large tubes. If I'm going to use a lot of paint, then I want to make sure I have the large tube so I um, spurt out generous amounts. Now I don't have a violet on my color wheel, but I need one for the purposes of this color wheel so I can quickly look up at the color wheel and determine what I need to do to mix around the color wheel or mix across the color wheel. So I'm taking some permanent rose and adding some blue to it. I'm adding some ultramarine blue to some permanent rose and that's going to give me a violet. And I like to mix my violet. 
but it's perfectly fine to purchase a Winsor Newton Violet. I just don't happen, I just don't do that, but go right ahead. It, uh, the Winsor Newton Violet I think is a little bit darker than this. So now I have my opposites on the color wheel that violet is the opposite of yellow. So I keep going around. My next blue is going to be ultramarine blue. Now, really on a color wheel, the next color would be a blue violet, but I don't have a blue violet on my color wheel. I'll mix that myself. So there's my ultramarine blue. Next, I go for a lighter blue. This is cobalt. This is coming right from my well and right from the tube. Cobalt blue, which is lighter than my ultramarine blue. Works great for skies. Lovely in a triad for clouds. Let's see if this is dry yet. It's pretty dry. We can go back there now. So I can put in my cadmium orange. There we go. And the opposite of blue is going to be orange. You can see that happening nicely. The opposites on the color wheel, the complementary colors, which you would mix for neutrals or if you want to dull something down or you want to make um, a value shift without uh, making a choice around the color wheel. We've talked before about making, if you want to maintain brightness, make a, a color shift around the color wheel if you want to uh, neutralize a color, then go across the color wheel. This is the only green I have on my palette, and it's Viridian, and this is Windsor Newton. Of course, that's not the only green that I paint with. I live in Vermont, which is a mostly green-ish state for six months of the year, so um, I have to mix my greens, and I like to do that. I want to have as much control over my paint as I can, and around here you kind of get an eye for green that there's so many different greens out there and there's actually sometimes a lot of red and green so here would be kind of a color that you might buy a tube of I don't know what this would be called but I'm sure they have it but like I said I prefer to mix things than to buy tubes it it really gets you in the practice of mixing and it allows me to control how much, oh, let's say I wanted to bend that color with a little bit of red I can, or orange, I can do that. And here is my uh, mixed light green. So the colors that I do not have on my palette are this one or this one, but I needed to complete my color wheel and I do not have this one. But that gives me my full range around the color wheel. So I've got my opposites. I've got yellow is, whoops, yellow is the opposite of violet. And blue is going to be the opposite of orange. So if I was to mix these together, they're going to neutralize. I'm going to end up with either a brown or a gray. And I know from experience, one of my favorite grays that I can get, which I often will use and let them just blend into each other, would be Alizarin Crimson and, and um, Viridian. Oh, it makes a beautiful gray. Now, these aren't the only colors on my palette. I have a few others that I would call outliers. There's Quinacrinum uh, Gold, which is this one, which is kind of over here. It's a little bit in the orangish category. The, that's Daniel Smith. And I also have quinacrinum sienna, and you might have burnt sienna, and that falls somewhere over here too. But those are neutralized, so I don't put those on the color wheel. The other color that I have that's a neutral would be Naples yellow, which I use a lot of, but I'll stick that over there so I know I have it. So if I wanted to neutralize my Naples yellow, I might decide to come over here to a violet. That's gonna make things, that's gonna make a gray. And then the only other colors I have, and these I don't use very much at all, are indigo, which is Windsor Newton. And I also have this very strange color because it appears sometimes in Vermont or sometimes in artificial settings. And it's a um, green turquoise, which is also Windsor Newton. And then I also have and you might want to put this one on your color wheel, which is um, 
Prussian blue. Oftentimes I'll use Prussian blue instead of ultramarine blue, but not enough to put it in my color wheel. And Prussian blue has quite a bit of violet in it, and I wanted to keep my primaries as primary as I can. And the last color I have, which I only use when I'm painting like weird glass, like colored glass, is phthalo blue. But I know a lot of people love phthalo blue. And a lot of people will use either Prussian blue or phthalo blue um, a lot. It's just not a personal choice of mine. I'm not suggesting any of this um, or, or that any of these are the colors that you should be using. I'm just saying these are the colors that I use, keeping it simple. So I just don't have that many colors on my color, on my palette. Let's take a look at the palette now. And lastly, this is what my color wheel looks like. This is what I've been mixing from as you've been watching this video. You can see that it starts with yellow, moves around through the reds. The orange isn't where it's supposed to be. Not all the colors are where they're supposed to be. I should redo it. And two colors I'm pointing out here that I don't use. There's a green and a yellow ochre, which I never use. But that's my color wheel, and I'd be curious to see what yours looks like. So remember to keep the white to your paper white. Paint's wet. Mass for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.